Google tracks our kids, surface phone rumors, and Mark Zuckerberg really supports Giving Tuesday. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 477 for Tuesday, December 1st, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Epson's new EcoTank printers. With Epson's line of SuperTank all-in-one printers, you can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit epson.com slash ecotank to find out more. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to the tech news. It is Giving Tuesday. But do not even bother posting the details of your charitable contributions on Facebook because Mark Zuckerberg already beat you to it. And I guarantee that he's giving more than you are. Along with the announcement of their new baby, baby daughter, Maxima Chan Zuckerberg, Max for short. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg and his doctor wife Priscilla Chan posted a letter to their new daughter in which they wished her a life full of promise and a hope that she will be happy and healthy. In the letter, they also pledged to give away 99% of their Facebook shares, which are currently worth about $45 billion. So congratulations to Max Zuckerberg and kudos to Mark and Priscilla for starting the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to support curing disease, personalizing learning, harnessing clean energy, connecting people, building strong communities, reducing poverty, providing equal rights, and spreading understanding across nations. I'm feeling like a bit of a Grinch, but I do wish that they had done this in a press release instead of cloaking it in their veil of a letter to their newborn baby. If you are a fan of this network, chances are you've heard of the encrypted messaging app Telegram. Leo and Steve Gibson are both fans of the service. Today, some of Telegram's 60 million users worldwide have reported that rival messaging program WhatsApp is blocking links to Telegram on Android. WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, a company that is no stranger to accusations of blocking mentions of potential rival services. Android police report several weird issues that have not been explained by representatives from WhatsApp or from Facebook. For example, links whose domain name includes Telegram do not automatically generate a hyperlink or URL snippet in the same way other links do. And you can't long press to copy or forward any message that contains a URL with a Telegram domain name. The latest version of the WhatsApp iOS app, however, does not appear to be displaying any of these blocking behaviors. Here is an update on the VTEC data breach story we reported yesterday. Today, the kids' laptop maker admitted that the number of children's information that was exposed has risen to 6.4 million children, making this the largest ever hack targeting kids, according to Reuters. Maybe this is overblown because the hacker wasn't malicious and the attention this story is getting might make companies who handle children's information change their practices in the future. That is what we hope. In fact, the size of the breach has made at least two state officials take notice. Connecticut and Illinois say they both plan to investigate the breach. Are you ready for the new Microsoft Surface phone? Sources say the Intel-powered Windows 10 phone that Microsoft showed off in October has been canceled. But now there's a new phone slated for the second half of 2016. This one will be designed by the same engineers who brought you the Microsoft Surface and the Surface Book. Windows Central has dug into the specifics and speculates that the rumored Surface phone might have an Intel x86 processor and will likely be timed with Windows 10 Redstone. Coming up, we will talk to representatives from the Electronic Frontier Foundation about their official complaint against Google. But first, this episode is brought to you by Epson, Epson's revolutionary EcoTank line of printers for home and office introduce a new age in printing. The new EcoTank ET4550 wireless all-in-one printer doesn't use ink cartridges. Instead, it features an innovative refillable ink tank. It comes with enough ink to print up to 8,500 pages, equivalent to about 50 ink cartridge sets. You're loaded and ready to print for up to two years. Powered by Epson's leading edge precision core technology, it delivers high speed, vivid colors and laser quality black text. Plus auto two-sided printing, a 30 page auto document feeder and easy wireless printing from tablets and smartphones. All EcoTank printers deliver an unbeatable combination of convenience and value with ultra low cost replacement ink bottles. Now you have the freedom to print without running out of ink. Visit epson.com slash ecotank today to transform the way your home office or your work group prints. For the best combination of ease and value, turn to the new Epson EcoTank printers. That's epson.com slash ecotank. We thank Epson for their support of Tech News Tonight. 
Google deceptively tracks students' internet browsing, so says the Electronic Frontier Foundation in a formal complaint filed today with the Federal Trade Commission. Joining us to talk about the complaint is Nate Cardoza and Annalise Gelman, both from the EFF. Uh, Nate, I will start with you. You are the lead attorney uh, and you wrote this complaint. Uh, can you give us a brief uh, just description of, of what the complaint says? Yeah, uh, thanks for having us on, Megan. So the complaint uh, is based on Google's practices in their apps for education and Chromebooks for education offerings. Uh, Google is one of 200 companies that has signed something called the Student Privacy Pledge. Uh, Google has, uh, along with the, the other companies who have signed the pledge, have promised not to collect information about students uh, unless they get authorization from the student or parent or uh, the collection is necessary for the educational offering uh, that, that Google is providing. Um, and in, in our investigation, we discovered uh, that Google is violating its commitment uh, in, in at least three different ways. Uh, Google is tracking uh, our students who use Chromebooks. Google is tracking our students who don't use Chromebooks uh, if they use Google Apps for Education accounts. Uh, and Google is also allowing geolocation data uh, to be shared with third parties. And all of those fly in the face of their uh, promises in the Student Privacy Pledge. So Annalise, you are a part of the activism team at the EFF uh, and you did some of the research. How did you find out that they were uh, tracking students this way? In Google's contracts um, with school districts who want to roll out Chromebook programs or Google Apps for Education and on Google's website where they disclose their policies about protecting student information. Um, they say repeatedly that they will not use personally identifiable information from students uh, for advertising purposes. They say that they won't take information from Google Docs or Google Sheets for advertising purposes and that they won't build profiles for advertising purposes. Um, but unfortunately, they fail to disclose why they're gathering so much data or what the purposes are. So so it sounds like one of the main issues is the Chrome Sync feature that's turned on by default on Chromebooks that are sold to schools. And the Sync feature allows Google to track and data mine every website a student visits, all their search terms, the results they click, the videos they look for, videos they watch on YouTube, and their saved passwords. Uh, so they're not showing ads, but they are they are collecting all this information. Is that what you're saying? Right, they're not, they're not showing any targeted ads, but they're collecting all of this information, including a student's entire browsing history um, and their activity, even on other non-Google Apps for Education, Google services. Um, so YouTube, for example, is a Google service that's not considered part of Google Apps for Education. And when a student goes on YouTube and searches for videos, they still may be served targeted ads and their web history and all their other online activity is still being gathered by the Chromebook and automatically, by default, synced to the cloud. So, Nate, I mean, uh, so the complaint is basically not, please don't follow us and track us. Uh, your complaint is you made a promise not to do this and you're doing it anyway. Is that correct? That's right. So the it, it it's not even it's not even quite that. It's the that Google made a promise not to track students without their parents' permission. Um, so that's all we're asking. All we're asking is that Google ask before they track our students. And uh, honestly, we don't think that that's a particularly uh, invasive ask. Like for instance, when I uh, when I, I I bought a new iPhone and I was setting it up, and it said, "Do you want to share? Uh, you know." application data with Apple to help improve the product. Uh, and I clicked yes, but Apple asked, right? And that's all we're asking Google to do, or that's that's what Google has promised to do. Google's promised to ask parents before they collect and use the data uh, about our students. Um, and the fact that they're doing it without having asked uh, is unfair and deceptive trade practice. And that's why we uh, complained to the FTC today. So, uh, so this isn't a matter of people just, I'm not even reading this. I'm just going to click yes as a parent and I'm not paying attention. It's, it's they're not even asking. So, I mean, if they were asking, uh, would you agree that most parents would just sort of click the yes, I agree to the terms uh, without looking at it as we often do? Yeah, probably. Um, but the reason that EFF got involved in the first place is the number of parents who have come to us asking for help saying, hey, my, my student got this Chromebook. 
uh, what is it collecting about them? I can't figure it out. Um, or uh, if, I, if, if parents have figured it out, uh, a couple of parents have come to us asking how to get their child opted out of the program. Um, so sure, the vast majority of parents might just click yes, um, but there are some parents out there who are more concerned. Um, uh, you're looking at the, the case study, uh, Jeff W. and his daughter, and that's actually a picture of Jeff's daughter uh, from the Roseville City School District. Um, Jeff didn't want his daughter using uh, Google products. He, he just didn't feel comfortable with it um, because of the amount of data that, that Google was going to be collecting and the, the complete impossibility of opting out of that collection. Um, so there are concerned parents out there who don't want their kids uh, browsing habits, saved passwords, forms, uh, all being data mined uh, by Google. It is a tough spot to be in it. I mean, personally, uh, our school district just issued iPads to uh, every child starting in kindergarten. Uh, we didn't really have a choice. I mean, we, we, we didn't have a choice. <laughs> uh, and so what do parents do when they, I mean, I, I've heard from a lot of parents um, that just feel like, oh, well, here are these iPads. I, I'm responsible for it. I don't want to be, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, what are some tips for parents in that situation to, to take more control, to not just click, I accept, I expect, accept? Well, we're hoping to have some people visit the campaign website, and we have a lot of advice for parents. Um, I think educating yourself about what's going on in the school district is the most important and most obvious first step. Um, but we're also hoping that parents will get together both locally and nationally and organize um, to advocate with their schools and administrators for better policies and um, to negotiate individually with teachers, even Jeff W's daughter, at least for a time was able to have an alternative, techno alternative technology option um, as a result of talking directly with the teacher. So, th so this is on Chromebooks. Is it also on iPads or on any other device that kids are using in school that use when they use Chrome or Google Classroom or Google Apps for Education? Uh, so there, there are two different uh, data mining uh, tools that Google is using. One of them is unique to Chrome. Um, and that's either Chrome on a, on a laptop or a desktop or on a Chromebook. Um, and so that wouldn't apply to iPads or, or other non-Google, non-Chrome devices. Um, the, other, the other type of data mining that Google does is Google is tracking all of your visits or all of your students' visits to Google sites. So that would be search, maps, blogger, uh, YouTube, et cetera, uh, and correlating it with the student data. Uh, in one way or the other. It's, it's tied to the student account. And that sort of tracking can still happen um, using an iPad. So some of the tracking can, some can't. Uh, we, we try uh, on our site, on our student privacy portal um, that, that you guys were looking at just a second ago, um, we try and break down which sorts of tracking can happen on which devices. I was really surprised to read this complaint because, I mean, Google is a big company. I'm sure they have the best lawyers. Uh, and this is something that seems obvious to me. Just get permission. And like I said before, a lot of people will just give you permission. Uh, it's and, and there seems to be something weird going on. You, you say in the complaint that uh, the student privacy pledge, uh, Microsoft and a lot of other companies that um, had digital curriculums, they signed it right away, but Google didn't. Um, do you have any idea why they hesitated? Why Google hesitated, I have, uh, I have no idea. Um, it, was, it was disappointing to us when they didn't sign it when, when the pledge first came on, and only after intense media scrutiny did they finally sign, uh, sign the pledge. It, it seems to us like Google doesn't view Google as a privacy threat uh, to its students. Um, Whatever Google knows, Google thinks that it has a right to data mine, uh, use it to improve their services, use it however they want. Um, Google seems to think of privacy as something between the students and parties other than Google. And we think that mindset needs to change and that Google needs to hold itself just as accountable as it would have us hold other third parties. That's a really good point. I mean, in the in the news, you know, there's the hack at VTech, the the toy company, uh, where they just sort of played a little fast and loose with all this uh, pictures and addresses and you know personal information uh, that they really who knows how they were using it or whether they got the you know parents to accept the fact that they were using it, but they were just 
sort of keeping it in a place where if you know where to look, it was pretty easy to find. So what you're saying is Google says, we are really good at encryption. We are keeping this from all the bad guys. Uh, but, uh, you know, because we've created all these services, many of which are free, we can also use it to improve our products or to sell products in the future to someone just like you. Uh, yep, that's, that's exactly what Google is doing. And, and we think that's fine, but they have to ask first. Right. Uh, so what happens next? You issued the, the, the you put, gave the complaint to the FTC. Now what happens? Uh, so on the FTC side, uh, the FTC will do an investigation and decide whether or not to take uh, enforcement action against Google. Um, I think FTC is barred by law from discussing that. So it's, it's essentially a black box. We fire the complaint off into the FTC and either they commence an enforcement action or they don't and there's not much we can do. Um, on the, on the activism campaign side, I think Annalise can probably speak to next steps there. Yeah, the step for activism that we're most excited about and that's the most important right now is trying to get people to take um, a nationwide survey of which devices are being issued by schools, um, what privacy policies, if any, people are receiving along with these devices, whether or not they're allowed to opt out, whether they're offered alternative technology options by the schools if they do opt out. Um, by going to our campaign website and taking a survey, you're going to help us paint a nationwide portrait of which devices are being used, where, and that's going to inform our next steps and also help us create um, some more guides to changing those bad default privacy settings, settings to actually protect personal student information. Um, so our campaign already has iPhone books up and we're hoping to we're hoping to roll them out for iPads and other devices as we receive survey results. Well, Annalise, thank you so much. Annalise Gelman, part of the activism team at the EFF and Nate Cardoza, staff attorney at the EFF. Thank you both so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us. Take care. You too. Speaking of kids and technology, if you're expecting and you're in search of a creative baby name, look no further than your latest optimized selfie. Babycenter.com says that some of the hottest names of the year come directly from Instagram filters. Lux, Juno, Rays, Ludwig, Amaro, Valencia, and Willow have all seen a spike that some are tracing back to the Facebook-owned Instagram. Lux is up 70 5% on the list of boy names. Juno gained 30% and Valencia rose 26%. And for those of you who recently named your baby daughter Max, thinking you were the only one, well, you can blame Facebook for the future rise in popularity of that name too. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We are on Facebook. You can find us facebook.com slash tech news tonight. You can like us to see the links that we're going to talk about on the show when we post them. And if you want to be part of the conversation, post a comment on the stories that we post. We will read the best ones right here. You can also subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.